Hi, I'm Craig Smith, a former New York Times correspondent and host of the podcast Eye on AI. I'm also a special government employee at the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence. And in this role, I'm serving as the host for NSCAI's podcast series on the commission's work. This is the last and final episode of six, looking at the commission's first quarter recommendations to Congress. In the 2019 National Defense Authorization Act, the Congress established the National Security Commission on AI to consider the methods and means necessary to integrate artificial intelligence into the national security and defense needs of the United States. The commission consists of 15 commissioners selected primarily by Congress and is led by former Google Chief Executive Eric Schmidt and former Deputy Defense Secretary Bob Work. Last month, the commission issued its first recommendations to Congress covering seven lines of effort, six of which are public and one of which is classified. We spoke with the commissioners leading the unclassified groups about their recommendations. In this week's episode, I talked to Eric Horvitz about his group's work on ethical and responsible uses of AI. Eric spoke about the need for training, standards, and documentation to govern the application of AI in the national security space. I hope you find the conversation as significant as I did. Could you introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, how you ended up at Microsoft, running Microsoft Research, and then how you got to the commission? I've been at Microsoft Research now for over 25 years. For the last several years, I've been the director of Microsoft Research, which has labs spanning the world, over a thousand researchers studying many areas of computer science, technical areas, as well as socio-technical areas, the intersection of technology and society. Several weeks ago, I was asked to serve in a new role, and I'm now serving as Microsoft's first chief scientific officer. It's interesting to have come into this role right at the same time as the COVID-19 pandemic was hitting the world. It's been an interesting time to be navigating the space of science and technology. I came to Microsoft Research after finishing my PhD in AI and my MD at Stanford University. And I came shortly after Microsoft acquired a startup company that I had co-founded and was leading. At Microsoft, I stood up a committee known as the Ether Committee, which stands for AI Ethics and Effects in Engineering and Research. That's Microsoft's Committee on Responsible AI. And this includes teams looking at bias and fairness, issues around reliability and safety, sensitive uses of AI technologies, engineering best practices, human AI collaboration, and so on. So I've been known as a researcher and spokesperson on AI in the open world. And I think this was part of why I was selected to serve on the National Security Commission on AI by legislators. And were you tapped specifically for this line on ethics and responsible AI? No. So I actually joined more generally, and I've been involved initially and most intensively in the line of effort number one, which is on R&D investment. I've been very active in that area. When LOE 6 came up, I was invited to do that. And it's a nice fit given the work that I've been doing in other places. This is a fascinating area, particularly in reassuring the public, because there is so much fear and misunderstanding about AI. And then even within the machine learning community, there's so much wariness about military uses of AI. The terms are not yet clearly defined. I mean, I think in your recommendations, you point out that fairness is a very slippery concept, whereas trustworthiness and responsibility use of AI is easier to define. 
Can you sort of set the stage and give us some background about the issues and directions of responsible development and fielding of AI? What are the key areas of work? It's an evolving area. The area of thinking deeply about the potential rough edges, inadvertent effects, and even malevolent uses or inappropriate uses of artificial intelligence technologies is an ongoing and rising area of research as well as policy work. The areas of interest that come to mind at top level include core values and issues around accuracy for speed, how we balance trade-offs, how we align the activities and behaviors of machines with what people desire or specify or request. How do you weigh false positives and false negatives when you set thresholds on systems that recognize patterns? We also can go deeper and say that we want to understand how we design, build, test, and field technologies and even use them thinking deeply about human rights. And when it comes to military application, do these systems and how they'll be used align with well-understood conventions, laws of armed conflict? Other areas of work include engineering practices. How do you build systems and maintain them such that they're trustworthy and robust? How do you build systems that are auditable, interpretable, reliable? How do you harden them for security? How do you make sure that they provide documentation of the data and the models being used, that their behaviors are traceable? It also includes looking at system performance. We don't want to field a system that we trust to make decisions that might have blind spots or terrible performance in a certain area that we don't understand very well. We want it to be robust, reliable, and resilient in the realm of human AI interaction. We want to build systems that can augment human intelligence, that can work well with people, that can explain themselves to people, that can actually relay their competence when they make inferences or reason such that a human being would understand how confident the system is about an inference that it's making. And finally, we have to think deeply about the accountability of people when it comes to these systems. Who is accountable for the way a system performs? Is there recourse to appeal an action made that might influence in a consequential way an outcome for a human being or a population? other opportunities for redress. So best practices include how we document chains of custody and command, and to always have human beings accountable for what systems do. You mentioned sort of three general areas. One is the ethics. The other is the auditability, the traceability, and the trustworthiness of systems. And the third is the governance and who takes responsibility for decisions made by systems. The middle one, the traceability and and auditability and thus the trustworthiness of systems, is an engineering problem and something that you can get your hands around. And the third, the governance is something that can be debated, and I can imagine various ways to solve that. The first is the one that is really difficult because it depends so much on use cases and the backdrop of societal values and making sure that the two are in sync. But AI and software, code, mathematics are extremely precise. Terms like good and bad, fair and unfair, different kinds of bias are just extremely difficult to define in a precise way. So how is that being dealt with? Let me first say that when it comes to values and ethical principles, there are several straightforward issues and several challenging ones. So you might say that when it comes to human rights, there can be some rather straightforward analyses from the point of view of the United States and the way the U.S. interprets human rights to make clear and crisp decisions and recommendations about whether or not a technology will threaten core rights and freedoms. Take privacy, for example. 
Privacy is a rich and intensely studied area in computer science with multiple probes and pushes and pieces of work, as well as in policy and law. And assuring that the data that is used by AI systems is used in accordance with the law and with the privacy of human beings in mind is a core value of the United States, uh, of our culture, and of our allies. And, you know, it's something that we can work intensively to assure we abide by in the systems that we build for this nation and by this nation. When it comes to other issues like fairness, you're correct. There is not one definition of fairness. And that's going to mean that whenever there are questions of the fairness of the behavior of an AI system in one or more uses, that we need to really think through and the we has to be defined. And the assumptions that are made need to be clear and transparent and revealed so that we understand what the system is doing and what its downside might be. Because when a system is designed and tuned to be fair in one way, let's say per demographic like age or gender, for example, it might be unfair in another way. So there has to be some trade-offs. Also, sometimes even pushing for a system to make it more fair can actually have implications for the system's accuracy when it comes to a simple notion of how well does the system perform a task. So there can be trade-offs there as well. And so there's always going to have to be a we, and there's always going to have to be a what. What are we trying to be fair about when it comes to those issues? Let me give you a simple example of trade-offs. So we built years ago as part of our work in medical informatics or biomedical informatics, systems that could analyze data from medical records of a hospital and then predict at discharge time for every patient, the probability that this patient would bounce back within 30 days. And that risk could guide the allocation of resources to aim selectively at patients at the highest risk for bouncing back to the hospital in 30 days, which actually is a penalizable metric now at hospitals. Well, it turns out you can actually adjust the system's performance, trading off the false positives, the times the system says this patient will bounce back when it's wrong and they wouldn't have bounced back, and false negatives, how often the system doesn't recognize that someone's going to bounce back and they do. You can make trades with where you operate the system, trading all false positives and false negatives. And this trade-off in some ways is actually an assertion of values, like how many patients we might want to miss versus how many patients we might overcall as bouncing back. And again, these are value judgments in some ways that often have economic and health implications. So again, in some ways, there are some things that are straightforward, at least in definition, like the privacy of data to not, for example, reveal personal identifiable information. But it can be very challenging in other places to find a measure of fairness or to balance a trade-off in a system that has implications for, for example, healthcare quality and economic outcomes. The work on this has been going on in academia and the industry. My sense is it's been centered in academia. Are there other sectors that have been working on this? And within academia, is it primarily in the computer science departments or the philosophy departments? And can you talk a little bit about what's happening in the realm of national security? I would say that the work in the realm of responsible AI spans efforts in academia, in computer science departments, in social science departments, in economics departments, and in philosophy and ethics studies, as well as the private sector, especially in IT companies that have a significant R&D effort is a rising area of interest and innovation, as well as in the civil society area. So like the ECLU, for example, has teams looking at some of these issues. In the national security realm, uh, quite a bit going on. You might say that national security is not just military. It has many dimensions, including our country's economic security and the vibrance of our science and technology, all the way up to our what our DOD departments do. And there's been ongoing reflection and efforts among the department. So, for example, the Defense Innovation Board had a focused effort on AI ethics principles for the Department of Defense. 
in the end, they came up with a beautiful document published last November, where they called out five goals to be achieved in AI systems. These systems should be responsible, equitable, traceable, reliable, and governable. One goal that we have moving forward on the National Security Commission on AI is to go a level deeper and to make more detailed recommendations. So when it comes to, for example, engineering practices, what does it mean to be auditable, interpretable, and traceable? What kind of documentation do we think should be required of the data we use in our systems, of the accuracies, the overall performance of the models that we build, how to maintain the systems over time, what's the intended use of the system, for example. When it comes to system performance, you know, what kinds of technologies do we need to pursue to have robustness and reliability? How do we characterize blind spots, the unknown unknowns in AI systems, for example? What are best practices in building systems that are reliable and robust? When it comes to building systems that human beings will be using, the big wins for AI will be in systems that understand how to work with people well to better enable people to make better decisions. And depending on the mission needs, you know, what's the appropriate degree of autonomy versus other kinds of human oversight and control. But when it comes to systems that work closely with people, we need to come up with best practices and recommendations on goals to allow people to get the most out of AI reasoning. This includes systems that can explain key aspects of their reasoning to people to relay confidences in the conclusions made by AI systems, including when the systems just don't know enough to make a good recommendation, to know when and how to best rely on AI systems is important. And that involves giving the AI systems capabilities to reason about their reasoning, to know their competences, which is a technology in itself that needs to be developed and nurtured. And then when it comes to accountability, we need to really come up with recommendations and directions on the details of how that might work, how to assure that we understand how accountability will work when it comes to a real world system. You, at one point, call some of these recommendations urgent, and I was wondering why you see them as urgent beyond the fact that the U.S. wants to get this right and get it done quickly. Was there some reasoning behind the urgency in the recommendations? We thought there's enough known now and enough training materials, at least at the level of making key end users and key people involved in developing and procuring AI systems to be aware of the issues. And so we thought that it was important now to bring the challenges up and to raise ethics and responsibility into all components of AI procurement, as well as analysis and research. So as far as the initial recommendations we made, We thought that literacy should be for the folks who are in the loop for building, for acquiring, and for using these systems. We also thought for federal agencies to start sharing what they're doing with ethical training programs with state, local, tribal, and territorial law enforcement agencies to bring people on the same page when it came to these challenges. So wanted to ensure that the state and local law enforcement folks who might be on joint missions or working with the same tools have the same grounding on ethical and responsibility considerations. We also made a recommendation that an expert body is stood up that would provide yearly briefings at a very high level to select members from the national security workforce on emerging considerations for ethical and responsible AI. We thought through the nature of the composition of such an expert board and who would convene this board. And we made a recommendation that the National Science Foundation and the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, NIST, pull together the right experts from across civil society, academia, 
and the FFRDCs, the federally funded research and development centers, to provide this kind of expertise for the United States. Is part of the reason why you want to get these recommendations out is to get ahead of the acquisition and implementation of AI across the national security establishment so that you have a foundation and a common understanding of what ethical use is, what responsible use is, what good governance is, and that sort of thing, rather than playing catch up. There's lots of excitement and energy around applying new capabilities, and we see that happening now and want exactly to get out in front and raise the issues of ethics, values, responsibility, trustworthiness as being critical. And it turns out that we see a paucity of trainings in these areas, and we see it at the same time a rise of a community of folks and understandings that would be quite valuable right now, even if it was just at the level of awareness when it comes to development, fielding, procurement. Yeah. And presumably the outreach or the inclusion of people outside of government is a way to reassure people and to get civil society's buy-in. Is that part of what you're looking at is to prevent the government or the DOD's use of AI from being siloed and mysterious by having some inclusive conversations outside of the government so that people feel reassured that you're paying attention to the things they're concerned about? I think it's important to get great advice and balanced advice. And this includes bringing together multiple stakeholders who herald from different sectors, all focused on challenges and opportunities with ethical and responsible AI. Another recommendation that we think is quite urgent is coming up with documentation strategies in how we document the provenance of data and its usage, the intentions of data and a model and a system overall, and the maintenance of systems. If we have a single documentation strategy, it would allow for more interoperability and awareness when we assemble systems or reuse them across agencies. And so the idea is to not just start focusing in on a specific documentation plan for our data models and systems overall, but also to think through how we can use this documentation. It's not just coming up with documentation, it's also coming up with the right strategy for doing documentation and oversight of the documentation for example, what agencies would assure that documentations are developed and supported across agencies. We actually made a recommendation that NIST should lead the development of a single documentation strategy in coordination with DOD, DHS, the intelligence community, and the FBI to establish and to revise over time documentation requirements for AI-related data sets, models, and systems that are acquired, developed, or used by these agencies. And as I said earlier about documentation, the requirements should include fields for describing the origins of data sets and their intended use, model performance and testing, connections between and dependencies within systems, and ongoing maintenance requirements. You can imagine if you had clear documentation of these attributes, it would make it a lot easier for an engineer to look at a pre-existing system or pre-existing data set and apply it in a new place. Can you give a use case in the national security space about that documentation? I mean, presumably it would draw on a common set of definitions, particularly with regard to ethics and responsible use. But is there a use case that you guys have used in talking about this that explains it? So whenever you have a data set, it's important to know where it came from. How was it collected? You can imagine if you collected a data set that came from a particular region of the country, let's say for healthcare, it might not be applicable or give accurate results when used to build a model for a different part of the country. We have a different set of demographics. The same thing applies in other areas. If you build and test a system for recognizing patterns in the early morning, it might not work well in the evening or high noon. So you have to understand the nature of a data set, how it's collected, what kind of potential biases might be hidden in that data set, 
it might be a problem to have this bias, but once you know the bias, you have a foot in the door for leveraging that data without falling prey to hidden biases. This is true also for models that might have been built for one purpose and might be employed in another purpose. Clear documentation, even documentation, for example, as to what a setting was on false positive versus false negative rates, which can be set with thresholds, change the behavior of a system and should be documented carefully when it comes to systems that might be moved around and used in different contexts and locations and times and for different purposes. So that's also very important, I think. We start out talking about how there's no single definition of fairness. Presumably the documentation, as far as it regards ethics and responsible uses of AI, would include definitions. Who in the government or is it the government that will come up with those definitions? Is it NIST or the commission? Or how do you envision those fuzzier things getting nailed down? Yeah, I think we start out with crisp distinctions like the provenance, sampling, errors, model performance, crisply defined by metrics. Even coming up with the crisp flags or fields, I think are important and make sure you have the right ones that are useful. And this should be leading that is a recommendation from the commission in coordination with other agencies. When it comes to areas that we talked about earlier, these challenging issues of how you define fairness in an application and then declare what you've done, how you grapple with issues of privacy, you can imagine that some of these things can be documented, but you can imagine even fuzzy things. You can still have fields that document what assumptions have been made in the system, what settings were made and why to have a declarative expression of the intent of an engineering decision or of a desired behavior in a system so that when it comes to understanding it and tracing it, we actually have access to going back and looking at documentation and saying, ah, here's why that system did this. And we can read in, and engineers can actually read and understand what it was that was the actual goal at the time the system was built, rather than trying to infer unknowns or what was behind behaviors without documentation. It can be very, very important for that kind of thing. Can you give a few concrete examples of how these can be integrated into the AI life cycle? The good news is we don't have to start from scratch. And in fact, we can leverage the strong work of folks interested in documentation of machine learning life cycles. So about ML, it's an annotation and benchmarking strategy. Actually, about ML stands for annotation and benchmarking on understanding and transparency of machine learning life cycles. It's an ongoing multi-stakeholder initiative that is pursuing responsible AI via increased transparency and accountability when it comes to the documentation of machine learning systems across the life cycle. So it includes starting with the data, how it is documented, to building models, to thinking through maintenance requirements over time, to looking at the performance of systems in different areas. And this was put together by a steering committee of about 30 experts, including researchers and practitioners across industry and academia and civil society. The first draft is out now, and we're looking at that very carefully to see how expressive that is for national security uses and whether we have to sort of contribute and help build on that rising standard for documenting multiple phases of machine learning applications, starting with the data all the way to the application and maintenance. So I envision a document like the DIBS ethics document that sets the tone for the uses of AI in government or in the national security space, and that would be part of training for everyone that's going to touch AI. And then on the engineer level, there's documentation so that they can understand best uses and understand the data provenance. And if there's a problem, they can look back. 
Then when you get to the warfighter or the person that's using a system, how does all of this inform them? I mean, is it simply from their training or is there a manual that they'll read that warns them, you know, you can't use this system in these situations and be aware of these issues in these other situations. I mean, how does this flow from a very top level to the person who's actually wielding a system? If we get this right as a nation, we will have training, awareness, guidance, monitoring, reporting at multiple levels, all the way from conceptualization of systems and how they might be used to procurement principles, to maintenance, technical refresh, down to the end user in terms of understanding how best to use these systems and where they're most effective, where they cannot be relied upon. And even at the level of the end user, when to call out inappropriate uses and failures, as well as to alert people up the chain about ways that things might work better. And this is going to come through a combination of training, oversight, ongoing briefings, as well as best engineering practices, controls, documentation that can allow for some of the goals that we pursue, like traceability and auditing, documenting chains of custody, down to policies when it comes to, for example, who is accountable for the behavior of these systems. I think that because AI is a fast-moving field and there's always going to be interest in taking the latest technology and pressing it into service, we have to continue to be aware to be sensitive, to be open and honest, and even skeptical at times of enthusiastic pushes to put things into practice without thinking through potential inadvertent effects, rough edges, and ways to make things go better when it comes to getting the most out of these technologies and minimizing the costs and weaknesses. That's it for this week's podcast. I want to thank Eric for his time. If you want to learn more about the National Security Commission on AI, visit their website at nscai.gov. If you want to share your views on AI and national security, reach out to NSCAI at inquiry at nscai.gov. The country needs you. And remember, the singularity may not be near, but AI is about to change your world, so pay attention.